you don't deserve it. Father, we thank you for your love. Thank you for your protection. We thank you for your guidance. We thank you for our family members. We thank you for our children. We thank you for protection. We thank you for aligning their ways with you, Father. We thank you because you keep your love around them. Father, we bless your name. We thank you, oh Lord. I commit to everyone that is still at home. I commit to people that have been watching this, this uh, online. I say, Father, you will touch each and every one of us in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for those, oh Lord, that is called sick. I pray for those, oh Lord, that is called weak. I pray for those, oh Lord, that is weak. I pray for those, oh Lord, that is depressed, that God Almighty, let the joy of God, oh Lord, be their strength. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that God Almighty, at today's service, oh Lord, it shall be a service about you in the name of Jesus Christ. We call upon the Holy Spirit to come and visit every one of us this evening in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, today's service, oh Lord, you will speak to every one of us, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And our life will never remain the same. You will change our lives. You will change our situation. And you will guide and protect us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Descend your power, oh Lord. Let Holy Spirit come down and be in charge, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. We bless and we worship you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah.
can give it again. My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, sing with me. One more time singing. My hallelujah belongs to you. Give it all to him, Jesus. My hallelujah belongs to you. I read the book of Psalm 91. Before I do the 91 verse 10, I will read Psalm 93 briefly, and that's what we're going to pray. It says, the Lord reigns. He is clothed with majesty. He said, the Lord is clothed, and he has gathered himself with strength. Surely the word is established so that he cannot be moved. The throne is established from hold. And you are from everlasting. The Bible says, The Lord have lifted up, O Lord. The Lord have lifted up their voice. The floods has lifted their waves. And the Lord in I mightier than the noise of many waters, than the mighty waves of the sea. Verse 5, it says, Your testimonies are very sure. Holiness adores your house, O Lord, forever. And I will take us back to Psalm 91, and we shall read briefly to 6. And I want us to turn it to prayer after that. It says, Psalm, Psalm 91, it says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. It says, I will say unto the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In him I will trust. He says, surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from all the perilous madness. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wing you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. And you shall not be afraid of terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the penless that walks in the darkness, nor of the destructions that lays waste at noonday. He says, hey, thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but if it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look will receive the reward of the wicked because you have made the Lord who is my refuge even the most high your dwelling place. He says no evil shall be for you nor shall be any plague come near you. I want you to pray and say father because I dwell in the secret place of the most high God I command peace in my house I command peace I command security in the life of my family in the life of my loved ones in the name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and say father I dwell in the secrets, in the secret place of the most high, and you shall abide under the shadow of Almighty. Father, let your shadow protect us. Let your the Almighty God protect our household in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and begin to say, Father, you will deliver me, O Lord, from the mouth of the fowler. You will deliver my household. You will deliver our children. You will deliver our family members from the Snare of the fowler in the 
mighty name of Jesus Christ. We cover everyone, oh Lord. We cover them, our children, our family members, our loved ones, Father, our neighbors, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says no evil shall befall them. Father, no evil shall befall our family members. No evil shall befall me covenant family in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I put them under the shadow of the almighty they shall continue to dwell in the secret place of the most high God father I pray for protection in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I cast away every spirit of depression in place of depression oh Lord I release strength of God the strength of God, the joy overflow in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The devil will not play with their mind, oh Lord. The devil will not play with their heart, oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, their wills, their thoughts, oh Lord, belongs to God, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we push you out, Father. We push you out, enemy. Enemy of our lives, oh, they're here by away in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we send them to hell where they belong in the mighty name of Jesus Christ everyone that is suffering oh Lord from every spirit of depression father in the mighty name of Jesus Christ depressions of the devil and so we say from this body they are cast out oh Lord in the mighty name of Jesus Christ open your mouth and begin to cast away cast out every spirit of depression every spirit of Lord in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every demonic power, we cast them out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, because the Bible says, at the mention of the name of Jesus Christ, he said every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that you alone are God, and Father in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every sickness, every depression, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I said they must bow today. They must bow today to that name that is above every other name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, verse 8, it says, Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. The reward of the reward is full of wickedness. And people are so miserable. I want you to pray that God Almighty, that you will protect everything that comes out of us. Everyone that, that, everyone that we are related to, that we are connected to, that no wicked people will be able to touch them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Pray for everyone and begin to soak them in the blood of Jesus Christ. Soak your household in the blood of Jesus Christ. Soak your children in the blood of Jesus Christ. Soak your husband in the blood of Jesus Christ. Your brother, your family members, wherever they are. The Father in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The wicked people will not touch them. The wicked people will not touch them. The enemy will not touch them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. They are here by prayer protected under the anointing of the most high God in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank everlasting Father in Jesus mighty name we pray. Psalm 92 verse 1 says it is good to give thanks to God and sing praises to your name the most high God and that is why Father we say thank you because you have answered our prayers tonight we give you all the glory we give you all the honor in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says you are a jealous God and that is why you say you don't share your glory with anyone. And so, Father, all the glory belongs to you. All the honor belongs to you. The one that is going through pain, Father, I pray that you will comfort them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Affliction, oh Lord, will not arise a second time in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration in Jesus Jesus, mighty name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. Put your hands together and celebrate God. Hallelujah. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship. As we bless your holy name, 
You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we bless your holy name. For you are great. You do miracle so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. For you are You do miracle so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one like you. Just lift up your hands and just worship God this afternoon, this evening. He deserves the glory. He deserves all the honor. He deserves all the adoration. Lord, we have come tonight to acknowledge your goodness in our life. We have come tonight to acknowledge and to celebrate your faithfulness in our lives. Thank you for your, for your love. We recognize your goodness and we are not ignorant of all you've done, even unto this hour. That we are alive tonight, it is because of your grace. It is because the Lord was with us that we were not consumed. Others were consumed. The enemy stopped them, but we, were, we remain unstoppable. We thank you, everlasting Father, for your goodness, for your mercy, and for your word that you release unto us at every time. And none of your word fail it in our life. Each time you release the word, we begin to enjoy the abundance of the word. Thank you, Lord, for you have declared this month unto us as our set time for mercy and for uncommon favor. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for uncommon favor. We thank you, Lord, for mercy. We thank you, Lord, that you've chosen to favor us all around. Thank you for the fragrance of your, mess, of your favor upon our life. Yeah, thank you. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worship. Yeah, Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Again, I'd like to welcome us. Please, you may be seated to our midweek service. Like I always say, the Bible says they go from strength to strength as many that appears before God in Zion. They go from strength to strength. So Zion is the place where we get strength. If you are feeling weak, when you come to Zion, you will refuel, you are re-energized, you are refocused, and you are restrengthened. So when you come to midweek service, you cannot be weak because it is an opportunity for you to be restrengthened in your spirit, man. Many wait and come on Sunday, then wait till the next Sunday. But I tell you, it holds one week is too long for you to allow yourself to be at the liberty of the enemy. The life, situation, circumstances, they beat us real bad. But when we come in the, to the midweek service, to meet with God in the, and the power of his presence, we are repositioned, 
we are rejuvenized, we are empowered, we are strengthened to be able to overcome every, every attack and onslaught of the enemy. And I know as many that has come tonight, and as many that are joined tonight, you are living here tonight strengthened, empowered, favored in the name of Jesus. So shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The Lord released unto us the prophetic word for the month. And he declared this month as our set time for mercy and uncommon favor. I'd like you to repeat that, my set time, my set time. for mercy, for mercy. And, uncommon and uncommon favor. My set time, my set time. for mercy, mercy. and uncommon favor. My set time, set time. for mercy, mercy. and uncommon favor. uncommon favor. And we said that prophetic theme is from Psalm 102, verse 13. The Bible says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the set time. Yea, the set time to favor her has come. Somebody shout hallelujah. Some may ask, why do I need favor? Why do I need favor? I have, I, I have strength. I can do by myself. I have what it takes. I have all the knowledge. I have the wisdom. I have the certificates. Why do I need favor? In Psalm 44, verse 3, the Bible says, for they got not the land in possession. Psalm 44. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword. Neither did their own arm save them. But thy right hand, thy arm, and the light of thy countenance, because thou hast a favor unto them. They got not the land by their possession. They did, it is not by their strength. It is not because of their labor. It is not because they, they, they had all the right certificates. It is not because they had all the right grades. It is not because they have the right looks. They didn't get it by their own merit. They didn't get it by their own power. They were not saved because they had all what it takes. But because the favor of God was upon their life. People of God, there are so many things we struggle for. There are so many things we want to acquire. There are so many things we want to, we are trying to have a breakthrough in, and we've been struggling. We've been trying to figure it by ourselves. We've been trying to, to just blaze our way through. But the Bible is saying here, yeah, well, there's no problem with hard work. But if you allow the favor of God to color your hard work, it will give you breakthroughs, sweatless triumphs. You don't need to sweat and struggle before you can gain and achieve what you desire. The Bible says in Psalm 35, Psalm 30, verse 5, for, your, for thy anger endureth but for a moment. Maybe you've done something that has caused the Lord to be angry, but his anger is for just a little time. 
don't believe that whatever you're going through, the pain, the misfortunes, is why? Because it is your set time for mercy. The mercy of God is what brings an hand to the anger of God upon your life. So if peradventure you have done something that has caused the vengeance of God to rise up, we all make mistakes. We've all done things we are not proud of. We've all thought of things we should not think of. And sometimes we feel those are the things stopping us. But now you are sure of God's mercy. The mercy of God is going to bring an end to the anger of God on your life. And when the anger of God ceases, then his favor comes alive in your situation. His favor comes to hand every weeping. His favor comes to bring you joy. His favor comes to bring you victory. His favor comes to give you breakthrough. His favor comes to give you success. His favor comes to give you promotion. If that is you, shout a big amen. There is a favor that terminates every fruitless labor. You, you've, been, you've been laboring hard. You've been sweating. But there is what we call, instead of sweat, you begin to enjoy the sweet. You've been laboring and sweating regarding in that your career. Why don't you begin now to enjoy the sweet of your career? You've been laboring concerning your relationship. Now it is the season for you to enjoy the sweet of your relationship. No more sweat. No more ill luck. Somebody say, oh, everywhere I go, bad luck, ill luck will always follow me. I break the cross of ill luck, misfortune upon your life now in the name of Jesus. From tonight, only good breaks will be following you. Only good breaks, opportunities will be following you in the name of Jesus. Why don't you just lift up your hand and say, Lord, I break the yoke of ill luck, misfortune, disappointments in my life. I break that yoke of weeping. I break the yoke of sweating. I break the yoke of struggling in my life in the name of Jesus. In the area of my career, in the area of my business, in the area of my relationship, in the area of my family, in concerning my children, Lord, I break the yoke of sweating, struggling, ill luck in my life in the name of Jesus. Lord, because you have declared this as my set time for mercy, let the mercy of God, let your mercy bring an hand to any anger, any mistake that may be working against my life. For you said, for your anger endure it but for a moment. Lord, let your mercy, Lord, Erase my mistakes. Erase my messes. Erase my faults. And give me grace and favor, even in the time of my need. Father, Lord, we thank you tonight. We give you praise. We give you glory in the name of Jesus. In verse 6 of that same scripture, Psalm 30, verse 6. The Bible says, the Bible says, and in my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. Lord, by thy favor, thou hast made my mountain to stand strong. Verse 7, by thy favor. Doubt has made my mountain to stand strong, that thou this eye thy face 
and I was troubled. By that favor, God will establish you. God will establish your business. God will establish your family. You will stand strong when others are failing. When the flood of light of life shall come, you will not be taken away by the flood of life in the name of Jesus. By thy favor, thou hast caused our mountains to stand strong. People of God, I would rather go for the favor of God than any other thing. Because by his favor, you assess everything. By his favor, you assess everything. Lord, and that was what was said concerning Jesus. In Luke chapter 2, verse 52, the Bible says, And the child grew, and he had favor before man and before God. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and with man. And Jesus increased in wisdom, in stature, and in favor. So there is a way your favor can increase with God and with man. Lord, let this season be my season of increase in favor. Before God, God will be favoring me more. I will be God's favorite. Somebody say, I'm God's favorite. This is my season of being called God's favorite in the name of Jesus. And I shall also have favor with man. Everyone you have set aside as my destiny helper, let my favor in their sight be increased in the name of Jesus. Just wave your hand right now and just thank God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Part of how we assess the favor of God is by wisdom. He said Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature. And true wisdom is favor with God and with man increased. You know, there's something you will say foolishly. That even somebody that is coming to favor you will change his mind. Yes. He is coming to, to bless you. To give you an opening door. And the next thing you open your mouth, you, he, he just said, no, this, <laughs> I'm not going to deal with this person. Yes. That is why the wisdom of God is crucial. And how do you assess wisdom? How do you assess wisdom? Via the word of God. The word of God is the raw material for the wisdom of God. And tonight, God will be releasing his word tonight afresh again. And I believe in whatever area that that word is coming from, that word will cause you to gain wisdom that will cause the favor of God to envelop you and to encompass you like a shield in the name of Jesus. For you said in your word in Psalm 5, Psalm 5 verse 12, Thou shalt bless the righteous, and with favor thou shalt encompass him like a shield. May that be our testimony in the name of Jesus. Put your hands together and let's invite Pastor Okay, to come and bless us with this, with, our, with the word of life this evening. Is somebody still clapping? Hallelujah. Are we still clapping? Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Pastor, for this opportunity. Give you. Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you because you're a good God. Thank you for this great opportunity to bring the word forth. Father, less of me this evening and more of you in the name of Jesus Christ. They will see Christ in me, the hope of glory. And that word that will change and terminate shame in their lives. 
will be released unto everyone in the name of Jesus Christ. The word that will deliver your people who shall be released tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Put your hands together. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. So I'm going to need a lot of help tonight. I don't have my glasses. So when I'm looking at you, don't think I really see you. <laughs> so I'm going to need a little help. So we'll do this together. This is not a preaching time. This is more of a, a Bible study. And we all should say something. So when it gets to that, you know, when we get to that point that we need to say something, please, I want all of us to contribute. And God will help us in Jesus' name. This month has been declared, and I'm going to make it very brief so we can, you know, finish on time. Hallelujah. So this month has been declared, like Pastor said, the month of favor. It's our month of set time for what? For favor and what? For mercy and what? Oh, come on, favor. It's my set time for what? Mercy and what? Mercy and what? So that should be something we should take hold of every day of this month. If you go out, immediately you leave your house, you wake up in the morning. Like we said last week, it's an opportunity for you to give glory to God when you wake up in the morning. Some people get to sleep, but they don't get to wake up. Some people have the privilege to close their eyes. It's not because you are so tired. It's not because you take Benadryl. There's a, something that can put you to sleep. There's another, there's nothing that can wake you up. Do we have medication that wakes people up yet? Anybody? But we have medication that put us to sleep, right? So how come they have not been able to figure out the medication to wake everybody up. Have we ever thought about it? Like a medication to wake somebody up. Can it be done? It's only God. That is the power God has. It's only him that has that power. Everybody else, they've tried. And I'm very sure all these scientists, all these China people, all these um, people that work in the laboratory, they've tried. But they have all kind of medication to get you messed up, to put you to sleep, to make you think otherwise, to make you feel like you are not who you are, to make you feel like you are somebody else. So many medications to mess your brain up. There is no one medication that can still wake you up. And that is the power that God has given to us. And that is when, when you will go to bed every night or every time you lay down before you even fall asleep. Give glory to God and thank him for the opportunity to be able to, to rest and thank him for waking you up in advance. Hallelujah. Because it's always good to give glory to to God in advance. Hallelujah. So tonight I'm going to be speaking about those benefits of being a merciful and joining the mercy of God and the favor of God. Say mercy and favor of God. Say mercy and favor of God. So what is mercy? Anybody? It's a Bible study. We're going to be the one. Um, Joshua, could you please help me? Microphone, please, so we can all speak. I want all of us, there's no wrong and right answers. It's just, I just want us to know that we really understand what we are talking about this month of May. It's a month of mercy. Month of May is our month of mercy, month of favor, month of grace, month of blessings, month of everything, the good thing that God has packaged for us. Month that we're all going to make it. If you've been struggling in the past months, this month we're all going to make it in the name of Jesus Christ. So what is mercy? Anybody? Yeah, say so. Uh, please, I need more microphones, please, so we can all have at least one one. It's a form of uh, compassion and, and forgiveness towards someone. Amen. 
My sister said, mercy, it's form of compassion and forgiveness, right? So I can say, I pardon you. I forgive you. So why is mercy so important in the life of a believer? Why? Why do we have to take it so serious? We already said, Auntie said, it's a form of compassion and mercy. So a form of forgiveness, so to say. So if we want God to forgive us, like the Bible says in the, in, when, we, when they were saying, teach us how to pray, taught us our Lord's prayer. We all know our Lord's prayer. And there's a part in our Lord's prayer. It says, have mercy on those. You know what? You forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us, right? So that is mercy speaking right there. Hallelujah. So because of that, and that is why sometimes some people say, well, I forgive, but I don't forget. Hallelujah. But what is that thing that God is saying about mercy? When you want God to have mercy on you, so that means even you yourself is ready to have mercy on other people. Because if you don't, if whatever you want somebody to do for you, you want to be treated the same way, right? So if you want God to answer your prayer and somebody is praying, uh, God, let me, uh, let, let Sister um, Patricia have mercy on me because I already messed up. I've done something I'm not supposed to do, but I want to go to her and say, hey, auntie, could you please forgive me? Hallelujah. In return, she should be able to forgive me, and when she forgives me, then I know our Father in heaven will be able to forgive her as well. Hallelujah. So mercy is very crucial in the life of of a, a believer and a Christian. So, but when you're able to forgive other, it's so, it's so crucial. And sometimes we don't really see how important, you know, I cannot, I, 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 people that knows me knows that I talk about forgiveness almost all the time. Because forgiveness is the key to your breakthrough. Forgiveness is a key to your blessings. Forgiveness is a key to your miracle. There are some things that because of we have so much stuff in our backpack, we have so many people that we are carrying in our hearts, and we are asking God and we are praying. You talk to somebody and say, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying, but I'm not seeing the result of the prayer. Why? Maybe because you need to deep, look deep down inside of you and see if there's somebody that you are keeping, you are holding so, you know, in your heart. Instead of for you to release that person, forgive that person, maybe that is why God is not hearing your prayer. And the Bible says the prayer of a sinner is an abomination. He said he will not hear those prayers. So you can pray and fast all you want. If your heart is not clean, your mind is not, you are not merciful to other people, trust me, you have to really go deep down inside your heart, have mercy on others, obey the laws of the, of the land, and ask God to have mercy on you then he will then answer your prayers. Hallelujah. So tonight, let's open our Bible briefly to the book of Titus chapter 2. Because we're going to be speaking more about the mercy, grace, and favor of God. Now that we know what favor, I mean what mercy is. So what is that grace then? What does grace mean? We already know what mercy is. So what is grace? told me grace is something that they all, you know, work end in hand, right? So what is grace? Elizabeth, Yeti? What do you mean about, what do you mean, if there's no right or wrong answers? Sister, you want to say something? Sister Celine? Huh? Hallelujah. What is grace? What do we know? What do we know about grace? Grace is unmerited favor. It is something that we don't deserve. But God decided to give it to us. We don't deserve the goodness, but he, because the Bible says the ones that he chose to love, the one that he chose to bless, he will bless. So it's something that we don't deserve that he gives to us, no matter what. Hallelujah. And because he, he loved us the, the best way, and he favored us, be the best ways, and he has grace upon us the best way, and that is why mercy is very important. There's no way you don't, because God already give you that grace, 
Hallelujah. Things that you don't deserve. The blessings that you don't deserve. The, the forgiveness that you don't deserve. He forgives you anyways. The, the breakthrough you don't deserve. He gives it to you anyways. The, everything you don't deserve. He gives it to you anyway. However, he now said, there's this mercy right here. Mercy is having a compassion on other people. So for you to continue to walk in the grace of God, you have to continue to carry the mercy of God with you. So both of them goes hand in hand. Hallelujah. And when we do that, then that is when we enjoy the most, the utmost benefit of the, our Father. And God will give us those benefits in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let's open our Bible to the book of Titus chapter 2, verse 11, briefly. Like I said, I can't see that far. So I'm going to have to. The book of Titus chapter 2, Verse 11. It says, For the grace, let's see if it's here. It says, For the grace, for the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men. The grace of God is what gives us salvation. The grace of God appeared, bringing salvation to what? To all men, to all of us. Is that grace that we enjoy. Without the grace, our salvation is, is questionable. Hallelujah. God, even Jesus Christ himself, he died for you. He died for our sins so that we can continue to enjoy that grace. But guess what has separated us from the love of God? Our sins and our flesh. Can we just stay away from it? Can we just try as much as possible, continue to carry the love of God in our heart? Once you do that, your life will be so, you'll be at peace with yourself. You will enjoy peace. Nothing will matter to you. None of this messy that's going on, none of this stuff that's happening around you that really makes sense to you because you, are no, you know you are not of this world. Why? Because you are set aside for greater and more blessings. So in my notes, I put... The benefit of God's grace, it says our ability to forgive, like my sister said, ability to forgive other people, to be compassionate about them. So when we forgive others as we have been forgiven, because your own sins probably more than what they have done to you. So when you forgive others, it helps you a lot. It helps you to be able to tap into that key of blessings that God has set aside for his own people. Hallelujah. Number two, the Christ example of grace that shows us how to treat others. The example of grace, Christ himself shows us how to treat others. How do you treat others? Some people say, well, treat others the same way you want to be treated. Well, I take that back. You know why? There's some people, they are so back in the days, maybe yes. When love is everywhere, when they will say um, it takes a village to, I mean, it takes a village to raise uh, the children, right? Is it that's what they say? These days, even if you're trying to raise the, if you want to correct the child, the mom will say, "Don't talk to my child like that." So they don't, they don't. They, so back in the day, there's some things that we can literally do freely. When I was growing up in my own, my on our streets. If by the time I get out of school at two o'clock, there's this old lady in that neighborhood. All of us, every kid of my age, we all go to that woman's house. We all go there, and she will feed all of us, and we all go back to our different homes. Hallelujah! So if if, if her own children too, if she's not around, whoever is around, whoever parent is around, everybody goes wherever. Knock on the door. Your mom is not home today. Oh, okay, she's at work. Okay. Come on, what do you guys want to eat? Whatever is in that house, everybody eats, they go home. You dare do that these days. Because if you open that candy, might be something else in that candy that that little kid is eating. And be, isn't it true? It's, it's crazy. No, everybody's kid. Nobody, we can't, we don't even trust one another. Sometimes we don't even trust ourselves. I mean, that's the honest truth. You can't say, well, I don't want you to go to, I don't want you to go to a house. Case they can't be kidnapped, they can't be molested, they can't do, they can do all sort of stuff to these kids. So everybody's scared. 
So I can't really say, do to others the way you want to be treated. Because some people, they are so wicked. All they think in every day is wickedness. It's how to hurt you, how to hurt other people. So if that person's mentality is to do evil, why would I have, no, because I don't want to do evil to that person, right? So if we cannot really say, treat others the way you want to be treated, because some people, hello, they are born wicked. And all they think about is wickedness. I mean, it is no, isn't, isn't it wickedness that will see somebody that for no reason, you just don't like the person, you just want them dead. You drive by, you just shoot the person. That's wickedness. Hallelujah. So wickedness is all over the whole world. So however, as children of God, we have to, you know, the Bible says we are the light, right? So because we carry light, we're supposed to shine through this darkness and let them see the light of Christ in us. And that is why your characters, the way you talk, the way you carry yourself has to be different from other people. Because if you keep doing the same thing they are doing, I mean, you can't, you're, there's no conviction. Hallelujah. Where I work, everybody, I job with everybody I with. But there's one thing they all know. You know, they know she's a child of God. When it comes to her faith, they know that. Some of them will say, can you, they put me aside. Can we, can, you, can we pray real quick? Hallelujah. So that is how it should be. Hallelujah. So let your light continue to shine. Let your character tell the whole world who you are. Enough of us. We do more of a talking, but we need to start doing more of doing. Hallelujah. Love, like I said, love is an action word. So showing love, showing kindness, let your character show what you preach, who you are, and begin to demonstrate it to the world. Hallelujah. And God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. So we should be able to treat others the best way and the way of the Lord. Because I don't want to say the way you want to be treated. Except you are true, a child of God. Hallelujah. You know, if they throw you evil, you don't have to pay evil with evil. Just pray them with kindness and God will reward you as you continue to do so in Jesus' name. So why do we have to forgive others? Why? That's my next question. We already talked about grace. We talked about the mercy. It's a kind of compassion and forgiving others. So why do we really have to forgive others? Why? Why is it so important to forgive other people? Sister, use a microphone, mommy. Because we want God to forgive us our sins. We want God to do what? Forgive us for our sins. Amen. Because that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's one of the commandments he asked us to do. I mean, he, 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 you know, there's a point. He said, teach us how to pray. If we read that uh, Father's prayer, that's the best prayer ever. I mean, that's the best, the best. If you, that's the only thing you know how to pray, pray that prayer. And there's some nuggets in those prayer points that he already. He so said, you want God to forgive you, then you have to forgive others. So if you cannot forgive others, definitely, and you're asking God to forgive you, you're just wasting your time. It's just mere wasting of time. Is it easy to forgive? If I tell you it's easy, I'm lying to you. And that is why the grace of God is very important in the life of a believer. So it's that grace that will help you to be able to forgive. Hallelujah. Because if you don't have that grace, you might not be able to. That there's no difference between you and the people that's not uh, unbelievers. And God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Number two. I just wanted to say, um, this is it's really good. Yeah, forgiveness, it, it does say in the Bible that God says that if we don't forgive those, that he does not, he cannot forgive mm -hmm, us mm -hmm, as well. Mm -hmm. So it helps when it comes to showing mercy and forgiveness towards others. We have to think about ourselves and the many times that we had to go to God for forgiveness, the mm -hmm. things that we've done. It says that we all have fallen short. Mm -hmm. So there comes a day in time we're not um, strong by ourselves. We need God to mm -hmm. help us to stay separated, to stay apart. To live that godly life, we need God's help in order to do that. So to forgiveness is important, and it's, it, it can be difficult, but it's easier when we look at ourselves and how many times have we needed mercy and grace from God. So much so, others should be able to have that Amen. for us as well. Amen. Wow, that's deep. So we need to look inward. Hallelujah. You know, I was listening to um, my spiritual father. He was preaching. There was a message he preached um, 
the other day, and I was just listening to him. He said, he said, um, when you, when you, when you tend to forgive, and you struggled with it, he says, think through it before you do any action. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Like, if I want to text you, I really want, you really hurt me so badly, and I just want to tell you how I feel, you know, he said, text that text message to yourself and read it to yourself and put yourself. <laughs> <laughs> He said, <laughs> praise the Lord. He said, read it to yourself and put, I say, okay, I'm receiving, this is a new message I'm receiving from you. Like, like literally, somebody texting it to me, then how will you feel? You know, so if you feel terrible receiving it, then please don't send it. <laughs> Because he said, even the host of heavens, they will not be happy with you. Even doing that, he says, those are the act of wickedness that most people do to other people. So he said, before you do things to others, think about it and put yourself in, in, in that sense. Hmm. And flip the coin. If I were to receive a such message from so, 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 how would I feel? How will I feel? So once we started putting ourselves in other people's perspective, that helps us and keep us in check at all times to be kind and to be nice to other people. Because it's, it is frees us up from the enjoying the benefits and the business and the, and, the, and the beauty and the peace of God. If you don't do that, you are just uh, shortchanging yourself from the blessings that God has planned for us. Hallelujah. So when we love others and treat them the way we want to be treated as a child of God, I take that right, there is no room to harbor grudges. There is no room to talk about other people. There is no room to keep malice within you. There is no room. You don't even have space because your space you have is full of peace. It's full of joy. People see you just happy. People see, even though we go through stuff, you don't let none of that stuff bothers you. You only know that, you know what? I am not of this world. My place is in heaven. And I act as such. I don't want nothing to bother me. If you tell me things that I don't want to hear, I just put my blank on and I blocked it. Why? Because here in this temple, I don't want no, nobody to contaminate my temple because I'm wearing a white garment. And when you are wearing a white garment, you see yourself as such, you be very careful what you listen to, what you watch, what you see, and what you touch. And those things are the ones that will help us to guide us and keep us in perfect peace. And God will continue to be with us in the name of Jesus Christ. So when we love others... We treat them the same way we want to treat them. There will be no room for grudges, like I said. You will not hate. There will be no, no negative emotions. And the end result is peace. You just People just see you. They'll be like, wow, she just, she's very calm. She's very peaceful. You know, when you see Sister Christina, everybody say, she's always happy. She's always smile. And does that mean she doesn't have problems? Yes, she does. But she does not let that take away her joy. Because the happiness is the things that's physical. Joy is internal. It's forever it's on your inside. And that's what it brings the joy out of you. Hallelujah. You will see the joyful people because nothing bothers them. You know, I remember one day somebody treated her so badly. And I was wondering, wondering how she would react to that person. And she didn't even... She didn't <laughs> Even the person that treated badly, didn't, she thought she had done so much terrible. I said, no, Sister Christina, she doesn't, she doesn't, even, she doesn't, she doesn't, she doesn't even think about what you are thinking. And honestly, that's how it should be. Hallelujah. Because you have, you have, your focus is on, is on Christ Jesus. Your goal is on him. Your motion, your everything, the whatever you do is on him. When you put God first in our lives, nothing else Nobody will hurt you. Like I always said, if they step on your toes, keep your toes and next time wear your cover shoe. So nobody will see your toes next time to step on him. Hallelujah. And God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Number three, grace brings 
about hope. We're talking about the benefit of grace, mercy. I mean, grace and mercy. So now grace, number three, grace brings about hope. Hope in Christ Jesus. It says in grace, we have the hope of everlasting life. In grace, we have the hope of everlasting life. That is so sure. That is a promise that God has given to us. So we also have the confidence that God has plans for us. And that includes the hope and the future to take us to the expected end. Hallelujah. The Bible says the plans that I have for you is not to, it's not to destroy you, but it's to give you hope and to take us to the expected end. Expected end of peace of joy, of favor, of common blessings. So he has all these things that he has for us. But that's what grace gives us, hope in Christ Jesus. And that is what God has planned for us. And God will take us there in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Number four point. There is healing in the grace of God. Healing is possible through grace and was obtained through Christ, Christ's willingness to take us, to take on himself the punishment that was supposed to be for us. The punishment, the death, the suffering that we're supposed to suffer, Jesus Christ took up all those punishments so that we can have eternal life. Isn't it so amazing? That's not, can, can, can any of us die for our children these days? No. Some people will say, no, no, he has his own life to live. I have my own life to live. That is the kind of the world we are living right now. Hallelujah. The world of selfishness. Everybody is so selfish. It's me, 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 I, 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 and me, myself alone. Hallelujah. We are living in a terrible, terrible terrible word these days. And that is why we have to be very, 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 very careful. But however, God himself, he took on the punishment. He died for you. He died for me. He didn't have to do it, but he did it anyways. Hallelujah. We should continue to give glory to God for the great opportunity to be called a child of God. So the healing is made possible through that grace. Hallelujah. Number five, comfort for every sorrow comes from grace. People that's going through depressions, they're going through challenges, they're going through things that we cannot even, they can't even imagine how to solve the problem. We all have challenges, but God himself will comfort you. Those are the things that we enjoy through grace. Hallelujah. Number six, grace allows and helps to have love for those who are otherwise unlovable. It is the grace of God that allows you to love a homeless person that you know this person stinks. And this person doesn't, you know, people don't want to have anything to do with them. But you are extending an, hand, an extension of love to that person. People that have been abandoned. People that their family member don't want to have anything to them, to do with them. People that they are unlovable. People that are in prison. People that are sick. People that are in jail. People that are in a hospital. People that are just wandering around. You just show much love to them. He says it's the grace of God that allow you to do this. Otherwise, people, we all have problems. We have problems of ego, pride. I don't want to have anything to do with them. I don't want to talk to them. I don't want to hit around them. I don't want to, you just, you just carry yourself in a different way. But you take the grace of God to show love to those unlovable. Hallelujah. And that is what makes us different here at Covenant. You show love. Let your love cut across. It does not matter what you're wearing. It does not matter how you look. It does not matter how you smell. It does not matter if you don't have a shoe on. Just show that love across 
bother. Hallelujah. You'll be free in the presence of God. And that is how it should be. And that's what we are trying to bring to the community. Let everybody know. Love of God is all the currency that we need. And that's why he's asking us. That's the first commandment that's given unto us. And God will help us to continue to love those unlovable that people that people that's, that have been, you know, they don't, they don't feel love. They don't, they don't know there's a love somewhere. Some people, they, never, they don't even know what it means to be, to be loved. I, 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 have you met anybody like that? I've met couples that they don't even know what love is all about. They wake up cursing. They wake up, all, their mom wake up to say good money to them. There's no good in the money. They just wake up and curse at them. Hallelujah. And that is how... That was how they grew up. So they don't know anything. There's nothing special about love. Hallelujah. So if when you when they give what you have, right? So can you blame them? No. Of last week, somebody looked at me and said, why, 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 why do you just, why, why, why do you care so much about me? And I, and I looked at him. I said, that's nothing to do with you. It has absolutely nothing to do with you. Because he was so, he was three times he question. The first time he asked me, I ignored it. I didn't really, really pay too much. I didn't give him too much attention. The second time he said the same thing. He said, you know what, I just, I'm just curious. Why, why, why do you just, why, why do you really care so much about me? Why do you, why are you so showing too much compassion? You don't even know me. And I said to him, I don't have to know you. The same way I'm going to treat Obama, and that same way I'm going to treat you, it does not make any difference. I'm not, if I can, if I can, and that's what I know, you're going to do the same thing to me. And he looked at me and said, I, I, was, I, I never grew up with my parents. I don't even know what being kind means. I, 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 I act, whatever I see, if they yell at me, I yell at them. So I don't think otherwise. I don't look at the consequences. But the way you are, you are, you are treating me is, is different. I'm experiencing something new. And when people start seeing that, and that's who we are. And that's how we're able to shine our light to other people. Hallelujah. Be unlovable. Let's continue to love them. Let's continue to love them. That is what God wants us to do. Hallelujah. Number seven. Grace gives us courage for the discouraged. You didn't get that. Grace give us courage for the discouraged people. There are some people that are so discouraged. They, they, you know, they, they, they are at the edge of giving up. Some of them already gave up. They, they, there's nothing, there's, the life is meaningless to them. It's, it's useless to them. There's no excitement. There's nothing really. They are so discouraged in everything. Some of you can imagine some people are just out there for two weeks, three weeks. They haven't even, they don't have enough strength to even take a shower because they don't have no reason to do so. You know, those are the people that we need to go out, out to and reach out to them, encourage them, and ask God to give you that courage to be able to encourage the one that's discouraged. Hallelujah. And God will give us that grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Number eight. I have two more points, then we will we'll pray. Number eight. Grace makes us, makes our burden light. Because to, Jesus took on all of our heaviness. He makes what? He makes our burden light. He makes our, he, 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 those yokes, those burden, those things that, that bothers us, those things that worries, that makes us feel like, okay, the world is going to collapse in front of us. Grace is the one makes it what? It makes it light. So we need to continue to cultivate grace and say every day, if there's nothing you learn from me this day, Remember, every day, time, every night before you sleep, when you wake up, ask God to give you special grace. Because we need grace to be able to do all these things. To be, if you are not, if you are discouraged, how can you encourage other people? So it takes grace. If you are weak, how can you encourage people that, that, that receive the strength? How can you pray for other people to have strength? It takes grace. So those are the things that we should, it's like a daily dose. 
And the only medication that we need, that God, give me that grace to be able to do this, to be able to love unlovable, to be able to treat other people the right way, to be kind to others. I need this special grace, oh Lord, so that I can enjoy favor of God, so that I can have mercy, because I know doing that, God will now look upon me and have mercy on me. Hallelujah. So grace makes our burden light, because why Jesus took on all our heaviness. Hallelujah. The Bible says, my grace is sufficient for all of you. His grace, is that's all we need. So that is why we should take it like a Tylenol into our system every day. Every day, like a tonic, like a, like a, a multivitamin. That's what we need, the grace of God. And it says, therefore, I will boast all of the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. Second Corinthians chapter 12 verse 8 to 9. Number ninth point, grace makes painful suffering endurable or even joyful. Grace, it makes everything that's painful, your suffering, your disconnection, things that worries you, that bothers you. It do what? It gives you endurance to be able to turn into joyful heart. Hallelujah. And God will make that our testimony in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My last point is another form of the word of grace is often used when we give thanks to God. Hallelujah. It says his grace is sufficient for us. How much more do we need? When we have grace, we have what? We have everything. It, 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 that's, that's, it's a done deal. Grace is what shows love. Grace is what al allowed you to be kind to others. Grace is what allowed you to be merciful to others. Grace is what allow you to be kind even when they are paying you with evil. It's grace as hell going to help you not to treat them the same way they are treating you. Hallelujah. So you treat them the way God wants you to treat them. Hallelujah. He said, love the unlovable. Help them. The one that's discouraged, continue to encourage them. Hallelujah. And God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Any question about grace and mercy? We already learned about why it's so important to forgive. We know that mercy, mercy is an act of kind of forgiveness kind of you know i forgive you and we need that to be able to enjoy the uncommon favor of god so we need we talked about the grace the benefit of grace what grace does we talk about grace helps you to love the unlovable grace helps you to be kind to other people grace helps you to be to encourage people that's discouraged grace takes away pain from you Grace allows and helps us to have love for one another. Grace helps us and comforts us when we are in sorrow, when we are sorrowful. Hallelujah. So those are the things. And we said healing comes with grace. Hallelujah. So those are the things that we enjoy when we carry the grace of God. And God will help us and keep us in the name of Jesus Christ. Any question? Addition, subtraction. It's a Bible study. Now we know what mercy is, right? And we know what grace is all about. So please, throughout this month, let's take it so, let's, let's the few that's here, you know, that was how Jesus Christ started. It started with just only 12, just few. And before you know it, he kept teaching them and they kept acting based on what they were taught. And that was, we are the result of those, you know, teaching. And that is why it's so important for us, too, to go out there and let our character show that we are true, um, a true child of God. And God will, you know, continue to be with us in the name of Jesus Christ. Any additional contribution? Nothing? Hallelujah. Uncle Lance, you want to say something? Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Forgiveness, that's the key tonight. Sister, brother, forgiveness. They're going to hurt you. They're going to do all kind of stuff. They're going to make you feel like you are useless. They're going to call you different names. They're going to lie to you. They're going to lie about you. You're going to be talked about. There's so many things they're going to do. But you know what? I have come to encourage you. Don't be discouraged. Please. Because those are the distractions the enemy is throwing at Christians these days. Because he just threw it at them, get them upset. There's somebody I, um, I had an encounter with. Herself and her husband got into it. Apparently, the husband cheated on her. She was so upset. She got in the car. She cursed him out. They, you know, you know, fight and do all kind of stuff. And she got in the car. Instead for her to stay back in the house, she started driving. And she got in an accident. My sister, my brother. Till now, she still can't speak. And the second chance is not there because she doesn't even know. If they remove the two bar of my hammer, she'll be dead. So it's always good to have heart of forgiveness because we don't know anything can happen at all times. And the Bible says when we get to heaven, we're all going to stand alone. Alone. I'm not. She can't say, oh, it was because of my husband that he cheated on me. He did, all, he did me terribly, and that is why I am like this. No, we, we can't continue to play, play uh, b blaming game. No, it, it doesn't work. It, it's, it doesn't work, and it's not going to work. So we just need to have that harsh, you know, compassion. Just let it go. Does it deserve your joy? No. Your peace? No. No, you're not going to give it away because of them. No, it doesn't, it's not worth it. So let's continue to strive and just continue to look unto him, the author and the finisher of our faith. And God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Put your hands together if you still love me. <laughs> Hallelujah. So let's bow down our head. If you have an offering, we want to give unto God. So let's give it unto him. And for those of you who are watching online, you can do it through your phone, 559-205-7443. Um, or if you want to do PayPal, you can do it through family at gmail.com. Let's pray over it. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for your word. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you because you have opened our eyes to understand how powerful your grace is. The Bible says your grace is sufficient for us. Father, we pray for the grace to be able to love unlovable, to be able to show compassion, to be able to, to care for other people, to be able to treat others the way we want to be treated. We pray that God Almighty will continue to Keep us in his perfect peace. We pray that God, the grace for healing, will receive unto everyone in the name of Jesus Christ. The grace to be able to encourage those people that's discouraged in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The grace to be able to forgive other people as they trespass against us, as they've done whatever it is that they would do to us, Father. You know, like my pastor always said, I have forgiven you even before you make that sin, before you hurt me, I've forgiven you. Father, the grace to be able to forgive completely and let it go. Father, we ask all of tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for everyone that still carrying one guilt of the other, that God Almighty will give them the enablement to be able to let go of those back cages or let go of those hurts, let go of those guilt in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And uh, Father, I pray for joy overflow and replace those suffering oh Lord, with blessings in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray for miracles, signs and wonders for everyone tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I commit every our loved ones, our families member in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and I put
put them under the anointing of the Most High God. That God Almighty will continue to watch over every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, who watches over Israel, never sleep nor slumber. Father, I pray your eyes will continue to watch through and fro in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, has we read in the Psalm 91 that said, no evil shall be for us. Father, I pray, oh Lord, for everyone under the sound of my voice tonight, that no evil shall be for our family members, no evil shall be for our children, they will not be at the wrong place at the wrong time in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says you guide and you guide the, the steps of the righteous you ordered. Father, I pray that God Almighty, you continue to order the steps of our loved ones, our children, our grandchildren, our husbands, our, our, our family members in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I commit this, on this family of God to your holy hand. Everyone that's connected to covenant of faith family ministry. Father, I pray that every covenant of God that we, you have covenanted with us, Father, I release it to every household in the name of Jesus Christ. Covenant of protection, covenant of wealth, covenant of blessings. Father, the same one you gave to Noah, you told him to go pack and get things ready, and people did not believe him. Father, the, at the end of the day, they were all his family was saved. And so, Father, I pray as many that's connected to this mission, to this ministry, Father, I pray that they are their safety is so secure, is so sure in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. You continue to watch over them and release them to favor and release them to blessings, uncommon favor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Wherever they turn to, when it looks at like the road as a block, Father, I pray that God Almighty, you will open that doors of opportunity for unto them in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you adoration. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Mon and Sunday is Mother's Day, and I know everybody's getting ready. So we're going to have um, manna with mom at 10 a.m. So some of us, please come early at 10 a.m. so we can have a good time together. Then the service starts at 11. And we see have our Wow Women t-shirt. Um, I don't know. Mommy, show, maybe you show it to them. So if you have not gotten yours, it's really pretty. It's beautiful. It's very, very beautiful. Sister Nicole, she put all her energy into this. She made it. So... Please, let's all get it so we can wear it on Sunday, you know. It'll be really nice for us to wear. It's going to be really nice. So we, and we're trying to sing a song. So, <laughs> all the women, please, let's go. It's going to be fun. We're just going to play it and just sing to it. So, we don't even, all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, going to, <laughs> it's going to be fun. So <laughs> it's going to be very fun. So let's we're gonna look for one common song that we can just sing and just it's gonna be fun. So we just play that song and we just dance to it and clap our hands and um yes. It's going to be fun. And God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Any, there's any other things, let's share the grace in fellowship. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Peace, shalom. Love you. Friday with Mr. Senior Pastor.